What's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rise. We're back here at Jacob's Mitsubishi in Newport Ritchie, Florida. And guess what? I have the smallest of the SUVs that they sell in their lineup. This is a 2022 Outlander Sport. But before we get into this subcompact crossover SUV, let's talk about what's going on here. Once upon a time, I always wanted a Mitsubishi, but it's the car that I never bought. Not this Outlander Sport. I'm talking more about the Evo 8, 9. I'd even deal with an Evo 10 right about now, but things have changed since the Evo was killed off. Actually, a lot has changed. Now in their lineup, they primarily have crossover SUVs. They still have the Mitsubishi Mirage, but this, like I said, is gonna be the smallest of their SUVs. Now, when we talk about the Outlander Sport being a subcompact crossover SUV, we're looking at vehicles like the Mazda CX-30, the Honda HRV, and that Toyota Corolla Cross. So what I wanna find out is, is it worth going the Mitsubishi route, or should you stick to the tried and true Toyota Corolla being that Corolla Cross? Let's go ahead, let's dive into our dark gray Outlander Sport and find out. Right off the bat, the styling. Mitsubishi is definitely bringing some unique style. And what's fascinating is that their whole lineup has a similar look to it. So what you're gonna have is full LED lighting up top. I actually like the angle and the cut that they do on the headlight housing. Working our way down, here's where you're gonna have other exterior lighting like your turn signals. Would have been nice if those were LED, but we do still have those old fashioned light bulbs in there. That's that traditional new style on the front fascia in the chrome. And then on the lower portion, they decided to do a couple, not just one, but a couple fake vents. You have the corner ones here, and then you have these as well. This would have been perfect for some LED fog lamps. And this would have been nice to have it be functional just as an air curtain, that's all. But as we come across the front grille, that same particular shape that you're gonna find on the bigger standard Outlander or even the Eclipse Cross, we do have some functionality up top. I do like the silver finish, that metallic silver finish, the Mitsubishi badge, especially with the way that they have the triangular gloss black behind it, really makes it pop. And then working your way down below, we got a massive mail slot here of an air intake and even more functionality on the lower portion, which is a nice touch as well with a little bit of that silver. So it, it kind of balances out nicely between the top and the bottom. Now, when we get up onto the hood, you get a nice slight crease to it to meet the grill. Everything else kind of V's towards the A pillars. Coming around the bend, you'll notice on non Mitsubishi Outlanders and the Eclipse Cross, you have a nice flat side to the front corner of the vehicle. And then when we're looking at wheel and tire setup, this is what we're dealing with on this Outlander Sport. We got an 18 inch wheel, machine aluminum, dark, gunmetal gray metallic, a little bit of flat black around the fender treatment to kind of balance and, and I guess make it look a little bit more rugged. If you're comparing it to the Corolla Cross, they got flat black. The Mazda CX-30 has the most where that cladding goes all the way up here. But I kind of like the way it's lower and it sticks out just a little bit further, but simple clean design. And I think that's all that this vehicle needs especially on an 18 inch wheel. Now, the one thing I don't understand is why do we have this Pep Boys JC Whitney catalog fake vent? I could do without this. Just give me an indentation. That would have been enough. Color matched on the mirror caps, older style on the LED turn singles. And then you can see the size of this. I'm six feet tall. This is a subcompact crossover SUV. Color matched on the door handles. I do like the way they have a unique style to the lower sill, especially as it twists in and then comes back out towards the rear. Everything else is gonna be smooth up top, good size and shape on the rear quarter window. And then as we spin it around the back, what are we working with? We're working with a nice low roof line, stubby roof spoiler. There's nowhere else we could put this, so I understand why it's there. We got LED tail lights. Of course, we got the bulbs. I wish that they would do LEDs with those, but I do like the way they're shaped. Here's another area. Why, oh, why does this need to be here? Just make it smooth or just get rid of it. Just paint it all the same color. 
and then working our way across, what they decided to do was take these fake vents from the front in the middle and bring them to the back. It would have been cool if these were the exhaust outlets. Let me know what you think about that in the comment section and then some more of that silver. But why don't we go ahead, let's pop the hood on our Outlander Sport and see what's powering it. All right guys, we got the hood popped. Underneath the hood, one thing for certain, there's a lot of room down there. Hello, hello, hello. You can actually hear my echo in that engine compartment. But what are we looking at underneath that very simple, clean engine cover? You're looking at a two liter naturally aspirated inline four. It produces 148 horsepower, 145 pound-feet of torque. It is made into a CVT, zero to 60. I hope you're not in a rush to get anywhere. Zero to 60 is nine seconds. MPGs, 24 in the city, 27 on the highway. It's one of those things that I guess it's nice to have choices when you're looking for a new vehicle, but obviously compared to the Corolla Cross, I feel like it's missing a few things, especially underneath the hood. But while we go ahead, let's see how it looks rolling away. All right, guys, we're inside this 2022 Outlander Sport. I know you're saying to yourself, well, Joe, I want a I need a subcompact. You know, I need a downsize. We moved into the city. My 20-foot long SUV that I used to own, I need to get rid of it. I need something smaller. How much is this one? So MSRP, the way that this one is optioned, is right around $26,800. Let's see how it compares to the Corolla Cross to the door panel. So the good news is, you do have soft touch material up top. The problem is, is with the silver and the gray, it just looks very dated. I mean, that's, that's the bottom line. But the good news is, no gloss black. Do the door pocket's on the tighter side. So maybe two churros from Costco and a bottle of chocolate milk to wash it down. But other than that, not a lot of space. Going from the door panel to the dash, it is soft touch, but like I said, this older orange peel finish it almost looks like elephant skin maybe it's supposed to who knows get to the center stack little gloss black heavy you do have an eight inch infotainment system screen and it is a touch screen which is great um, and i do like the way it's not protruding past the dash working your way down you got your standard ac controls easy to figure out temperature blower fan usb a's heated seats two stages shut your traction control off for a smoky burnout and of course you got your 12 volt. Down here, you got enough room, I would probably say for four or five of the smaller Slim Jims that you get at the gas station. This little guy here, this is gonna control your CVT. A Little bit of silver, a little bit of chrome and gloss black. Good old fashioned e-brake when you're able, when you're wanting to whip out the rear end on this thing. And then of course, two cup holders. There's your Mitsubishi key fob, spin it around. Would be nice to have remote start. That would have been a nice touch. This armrest is as hard as a rubber rock. If a rock was made out of rubber, this would be it. But it is an armrest. You could actually rest your arm here. Open it up. You do get a 12 volt and you got enough room in there, I would say, for two baseballs. One signed by Ken Griffey Jr. Maybe the other one signed by Don Mattingly. Or maybe you like people who use steroids and you went with Jose Canseco. Who knows? but two balls fit in there. I tested it. Seats, this is probably my favorite thing. Smooth, soft touch. I like the red stitching, and I think they did a great job with making the seat look sporty for this sport, but you got manual seat controls for the passenger, manual seat controls for the driver, and no sunroof at $26,000. But why don't you go ahead, get on over to the business end. I wanna show you behind the wheel of this Outlander Sport. Hi guys, business time behind the wheel. You got your manual seat controls, easy to get to, just not really feel like the best quality. I'm six feet tall, I got plenty of headroom. Steering wheel, the leather up top, the gloss black on the bottom is really bothering me, especially for fingerprints. It is a manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel. And then your dash, you got analog tack, analog speedometer, and a small digital 4.2 inch digital display in the center there, nothing else. Simple and clean. 
But why don't we go ahead, we talked about what's up front, let's get in the back seat and see how much room there is for your passengers in this Outlander Sport. All right guys, back seat time in this Outlander Sport. And what's interesting is that there is room back here, especially for taller people like myself. It's just the back of the seat is very upright. I feel, I don't know, like I'm sitting in, an, in a high school classroom desk chair. Kind of feels kind of awkward. You do have a pocket, but it's very shallow. So if you go to Jimmy John's and get your full-size sub, you're going to have to make sure you tuck it in there so it doesn't slide out and then you get pickle and mustard all over your feet. Surprise, surprise, we got a USB-C and a USB-A. I have no pocket over here, which is kind of bizarre. I didn't move the seat because I wanted to show you somebody could be sitting far back and you still got leg room back here. Take the armrest, flip it down. Now this is a soft armrest, the one up front. This though is Charmin soft, two cup holders, and then you got the same great, almost like a microfiber suede material with the soft material kind of blended in around there. But why don't we go ahead, let's get in the cargo area and see if there's any room in this smaller size Mitsubishi. All right guys, time to get in that cargo area. Now, you are gonna have to use your muscles because there's no electric assist, so you're gonna have to lift. No, just kidding, it's not that heavy. You're just gonna flip it right up. What you're gonna be greeted to is actually quite a bit of usable room. 24 cubic feet of space. I like the way they have these melon holders on each side. So if you like melons and you like to have them in your hands, you could also store one on each side, a nice cantaloupe, honeydew, and even a small Japanese watermelon. Have you ever seen those? They're actually square. But anyways, pick this up. You got a nice size spare. Lots of brands are getting rid of spares. We got it on the Mitsubishi. And then guess what? If you're gonna have that annual hot dog eating competition with your family and friends, when you go to Costco and you're getting the relish and the sauerkraut and the buns and everything else, you need more room, watch this. Very simple, you're just gonna hit the button and it flops right down. And to be honest with you, I have to go get my balancing scale and measure, but that's pretty much almost flat. Let me fix this one just so we show you the real deal here on Rady's Rides. There you go. Almost totally flat, and now you're just doubling the amount of room that you have. But you know what? Double your room, double your pleasure. I want to double my fun, or at least try to. Let's go ahead and take this Outlander Sport for a little spin. All right, guys, we're inside this 2022 Mitsubishi Outlander Sport. Right away, there's a couple things you're gonna feel. First of all, there's lots of room up front for you and your passenger. The second thing, unfortunately, you're gonna feel is that the interior is very dated. I mean, there's no way around that. Mitsubishi really needs to redesign this. But at the price point, depending on you know what you could get it for out the door, this might be the better way to go compared to a Toyota Corolla Cross. Now, the good news is, visibility is great out the front you got all your safety features and clean visibility out the back the bad news is is that you do have a CVT and not a ton of horsepower gauges are easy to read easy to get to the infotainment AC controls are easy to understand and everything else is well laid out in here it's just like I said very dated but the seats which are my favorite part not only look good, but they are comfy as well. Driving down the road, super smooth. A little bit of wind noise, but nothing too, too crazy, which is good news. All right, guys, we're going to make a U-turn here. Uh, very easy to do in this Outlander Sport. Steering is a little heavy. I think it might surprise some people, but let me come to a dead stop here. Nobody's behind us. On throttle, here we go. So as you can hear, the challenge is there's no simulated gears with the CVT. So when you're on throttle, the revs just peg at around 6,000 RPM. It is buzzy. I mean, I know it's a four cylinder, but it does make a little extra noise than some other four cylinders in this segment. But you're getting decent fuel economy. And like I said, if you want something different that you're not gonna see going down the road, as often, the Mitsubishi Outlander Sport is one of those vehicles. But hopefully this gave you a nice overall feel of what 
the Outlander Sport is all about for 2022. We're going to get back to Jacob's Mitsubishi and wrap this one up. So I'll see you in a split second. All right, guys. Been another fun day here at Jacob's Mitsubishi. I definitely want to thank Kevin, Joe, and the rest of the crew getting us access to this 2022 Outlander Sport. Let me know what you think about it. Would you go this route or would you go the more tried and true Corolla Cross Toyota route? Let me know in that comment section. But if you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. I'll come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radies Rides family. We definitely got to thank the man in charge working the camera. He's doing it like a champ. Show Steven some love in that comment section. Check him out on Instagram, Steven Flood Photography. And that's photography with a PH, not an F. Thank you, Steven, for your hard work. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.